Some Game of Thrones fans believe that the first Sword of Bravo, Serio Pharrell, he never died. Because we never see him die. Granted, we didn't see the Blackfish or Stannis die, and sadly, they're gone. But there are a lot of clues in the books that suggest that Serio lives on, possibly as Jock and Hagar. I've got plenty of notes on that, but I'm still not sold, so for now, I want to look specifically at the fight scene. How did that fight end? There are clues in the books in the show alike, but a key clue happens inside of Arya's head, and the show doesn't give us train of thought, so let's go over that. We last see Serio with a wooden sword, or a piece of one, but in this clip, we hear a metal sword drop. Did you hear it? I'll play it one more time. Serio had a wooden sword, but the sound was metal. Was that Sir Meryn Trant's sword? Does that imply that Serio won the fight, and then he ran away? Probably not, at least if we can take him at his word, because Meryn Trant is still alive, and then we got this. The first sword of Bravos does not run. And there's a second reason, it's more important. The metal sword sound most likely comes from someone dying up those stairs. You can see their shadows moving, they're fighting. To explain why the shadows are not Meryn and Serio, let's frame the scene or the chapter. There are four parts. Training, confrontation, the fight, and the flight. So Arya and Serio are training. In the books, the entire purpose of this scene is to teach Arya the difference between watching and seeing. I watch, but you- Watching is not seeing. Dead girl. Sirio does this by explaining how he became the first Sword of Bravos. He was not the best fighter, that's a big misconception. There were men faster, stronger, and younger, but Sirio could see the truth. The seeing, the true seeing, that is the heart of swordplay. The Sea Lord had shown him a cat and told Sirio that she was from faraway land. He then asked if Sirio had ever seen her like, as if she was something special, but it was just a trick. Sirio saw the truth and said, yes, I've seen his like before. First off, it's a boy, not a girl. And I see thousands like him every day. An ordinary cat, nothing more. The Sea Lord laughed and named him the first Sword of Bravos. So in part one, Sirio teaches Arya about the true seeing. In part two, Sirio displays it in real life, because Marin Trant showed up and called for Arya, but Sirio stopped her. And why is it that Lord Eddard is sending Lannister men in place of his own? I'm wondering. Part 3 is the fight. Sirio injures the first man and then tells Arya to run to her father for the first of two times. Arya child, we are done with dancing for the day. Run to your father. He then kicks butt five on one, and as he does so, Arya retreats to the back door, which leads to the kitchen. But she does not leave, she keeps watching the fight. It's just Sirio and Marin Trant at this point. Sirio tells Arya to leave a second time. Be gone now, Arya. At which point, Arya reflects on the true scene. Like we said earlier, you don't get this in the show because they don't give us a character's train of thoughts. We don't get to look inside their heads, but here it is from the books. She saw the knight in his pale armor, head to foot, legs, throat, and hand sheathed in metal, eyes hidden behind his white helm, and in his hand, cruel steel. Against that, Sirio in a leather vest with a wooden sword in his hand. Then she screams, Come with me. Run. In other words, Arya applied the lesson that Sirio had just taught her, the true seeing, and she concluded that Sirio was going to lose that fight, not necessarily die. There's a chance that Sir Meryn Trant threw Sirio into the dungeons and then he becomes Jacques and Hagar. But the point is, Sirio taught her about the true seeing, he then used it to save her life, and then she used it to see the sad truth and save her own life by running away. Now, part four, the escape. In this part, You'll see why the sword sound, the metal sword sound, it did not come from Sumerian Trans sword. And you'll also get some more details because the show made it look kind of easy, but in truth, Arya was an incredibly brave little girl. Check it out. So Arya exits the room through the back door. She runs through the kitchen and gets to the turret and has to make up a choice, up or down. Up would take her to the covered bridge that spanned the small court to the Tower of the Hand. Up would take her to her father. But that would be the way they'd expect her to go, for certain. Never do what they expect, Sirio once said, so she went down. As you can see, this was a big moment for Arya, choosing between her heart and her head. She used her head and takes the road less traveled by, and this is the scene where we hear the metal sword. So it was not Meryn Trans sword, because she had already run through the kitchen and away from that room that they were fighting in. The sound comes from someone up those stairs, where her father was, the direction that she chose to avoid. Instead, she heads down into the darkness, in more ways than one, we'll get to that in a minute. So she runs down into a wine cellar, climbs out a window, and hears more fighting, coming from the Tower of the Hand. Good thing she didn't go there. 
She's sneaking around, pretending that she was chasing cats, except she was the cat now, and if they caught her, they would have killed her, so she thought. She reaches the stables, finds Needle, and then kills the stable boy, her first kill ever, forgetting everything Serio had taught her, but remembering what Jon Snow had taught her. Stick him with the pointy end. She goes to saddle a horse and realizes, uh-oh, can't do that. The gates would be closed and guarded with orders to not let anyone out. But there were guards everywhere. She had never seen so many guards on the walls. She had to leave, but when the moment came, she was too frightened to move. Poor little girl. A small voice then whispered in her ear, calm as still water. Quiet as a shadow. She wonders, was it her own voice or Sirio's? This is left open to interpretation. Maybe Arya was just remembering his advice, his lessons. Or maybe someone else was speaking to her like Bloodraven or Future Brand. Probably not though because those were Sirio's words, so it was probably Sirio's voice. The question is, was it just a memory? Or was he alive or was he dead? Did he work her somehow and tell her? Or did Sirio die and live a second life inside Arya? We'll never know. Either way, it somehow calmed her fears, so she steps out of the stable and walks casually across the courtyard in plain view of all the guards. But she's calm, so she does not draw any attention. Smooth criminal. She goes through the sept and finds her way to the dark cellars, where she had previously chased a cat and had overheard Varys and Illyrio. The dragon skulls are staring at her, but this time, the monsters did not frighten her. They seemed almost old friends. Pretty cool, monsters becoming friends. Maester Crescent has a similar thought about the gargoyles on Dragonstone right before he tries to kill Melisandre. And it's also similar to the way that Jon once looked at the people north of the Wall as wilding monsters, but now he looks at them as free folk friends. And who knows, maybe people will see the White Walkers differently by the end of Game of Thrones Season 8. It's also worth noting, Arya sees a pair of eyes, which may suggest that Ciro died and lived a second life inside a rat, or a cat. Eventually, Arya decides she would be better off without the light, so she outs her candle, it's dark, and she reflects on her first time in the Winterfell crypts. Rob had had Jon Snow cover himself in flour, then Jon popped out and he scared Arya, Bran, and baby Rickon. Jon Snow the spirit, Jon Snow the ghost, pretty interesting. That memory made Arya smile, and after that, the darkness held no more terrors for her. The stable boy was dead, she'd killed him, and if he jumped out at her, she'd kill him again, she thought. You see what's happening here? George R. R. Martin is referencing the literal darkness of the Dark Cellars and simultaneously foreshadowing Arya's fall into darkness. The chapter ends with her footsteps sent soft echoes hurrying ahead of her as she plunged deeper into the darkness. Powerful stuff, George. We'll expand on a bunch of this stuff in future videos. Hit subscribe, but back to the topic at hand. When analyzing Serio's fate, keep in mind that the details from the book suggest that this scene here is far away from the fight. So the metal sound that we hear, it was not Marantran's sword. And the main takeaway of this chapter is true seeing. Serio explained it, he demonstrated it, and presumably Arya implemented it. She saw the truth. Serio was going to lose. Kill the Bravosi. So the only question is, did Trant kill him as he said he wanted to? Or did he throw him in the dungeons and then he became Jokin Agar? I'm still undecided. Either way, Serio lives on inside Arya's head. And he'll forever live on in our hearts. An awesome character. Thank you, George. And thank you to Milto Shiralamo. You're awesome, dude. Thank you.